Hi again. So in this video we are going to deal with Hagen's principle. Okay, and this refers to waves and his principle states the following that each particle on a wave front, okay, and I think let's circle the things that we probably have no idea what it's referring to. Each particle, particle I suppose is okay in a wave front become becomes the source of a smaller wavelets okay maybe you don't know what wavelets are or secondary waves they the same thing okay the surface tangent to the secondary wave can be used to determine the future position of the wave okay so this is Hagen's principle talking about how can we determine the future position of a wave and it's saying that um, the particles on the wave front becomes a source of smaller waves and those smaller waves can be used to determine the position of the new wave um, front actually so let's let's go and look at what is a wave front okay so if I were to write down the definition of a wave front then I would say the following that a wave front is an imaginary line okay so far so good joining points on a wave that are in phase okay so maybe the only thing that you don't know what we're talking about here is the word in phase now in phase just refers to waves actually two or more okay waves that reach their peaks and troughs at the same time. Okay, we looked at that um, when we were talking about constructive interference, okay? at the same time. So if I were to draw two waves here, okay, wave one, and here I draw a second wave, you notice that when this one is at its peak, this one is at its peak. When this one has its trough, this one has its trough. Okay, so these are waves that are in phase. Okay, and because they are in phase, we're talking about a wave front is an imaginary line joining points on a wave that are in phase. So notice how these two points are in phase. So if I draw an imaginary line between these points, then that little line is called a wave front. So let me draw a few waves, just randomly draw a few waves, okay and uh, you can imagine it as water if you want to notice how that the points that are in phase is this is the peak that is the peak that is the peak that's a peak that's a peak that's a peak there's another so all of these points are in phase and if I draw an imaginary line between them okay there I go not not very pretty line okay but, but more or less let's do this middle one a bit better an imaginary line between them, then these are the wave fronts for the peaks. For the peaks. Okay, so I drew wave fronts for the peaks, and that's each one of these is a separate wave front for those peaks. Okay, which means that smack in the middle of these two wave fronts, in other words, where there's no wave front, that would be the troughs. Okay, so wave fronts, let's just see. A wave front is an imaginary line joining points on a wave that are in phase. Okay, so now we know what wave fronts are. Now let's further consider Huygens' principle. Each particle on a wave front becomes the source of smaller wavelets. So if I go back to this, this we are actually saying that if I were to just draw this a little smaller, so I instead of drawing that whole um, the waves as well, I just draw the wave front. So there's my my three wave fronts. 
okay and you remember that this represented these waves and that was a particle on the wave so there we had one particle uh, the next particle at its peak the next particle at its peak that was for the first wave this is for the second wave and this was now the third third wave I'm just drawing it a little bit smaller than there putting those those wave fronts and, and you can kind of imagine that this was looking at at a bunch of waves on a, a water surface or something and then just connecting um, these waves with a line okay and now I'm looking at it straight from the top eliminating all the water and just looking at those imaginary lines that was connecting the particles now what Hagen's principle is saying is that each particle becomes the source of n a new wave or wavelets. Now, whenever you have a source of, of, of waves, or not whenever, but um, it, it actually says it's a source of circular waves. So he, this one actually is a source of, and let me make the wavelets, there is this, this one is a source of a new wave and this one is a source of a new wave okay and this one is a source of a new wave and then the second part of the, th the um, statement says that the wavelets or the s secondary waves the surface tangent to the secondary waves can be used to determine the future position so if I look at the surface that is tangent to these there we go this line is a line tangent means just touching so there's a line just touching these new waves and that becomes my new wave but that's what I see that's my next wave front same goes for this one okay that one become, becomes a source of a new wave now this uh, or smaller wavelets now these wavelets have the same period and the same uh, what uh, frequency the same velocity okay each one still has the property of the original wave that's why I'm making it that size okay and this particle and here we see we form the next wave so if I had to go I don't know where the next wave would be and I had to go and predict the next wave I would go to that point and draw a circular wave with the same properties in other words the same wavelength okay from there um, uh, it, it would be a circular wave as I, I should have wrote down in Hagen's principle and there are my smaller wavelets and then what I do is I, I, I join or I draw a line that just touches each one of those half circles and this would be my new wave front that would be my new wave front now remember we represented wave fronts um, sorry Neff wave front let me clear that this is our new wave front remember we said that our wave fronts was the imaginary line joining the particles on the crest or on the peak you could have used the ones at the trough it can be any point as long as you're consistent with which point you are choosing I prefer choosing the peaks it makes more sense if this is the peak and they are in the middle of the peaks I could actually make a little dotted line down there um, a different color maybe that would be the wave front for the troughs okay that would be the wave front for the troughs now remember that um, whenever we have troughs and peaks aligning okay that's where we are actually in the middle here okay when troughs and peaks align we are uh, we have destructive interference and and that's where we actually have no displacement okay let's just look at one more example of this let's say we have a, a source here and this source is a source of waves and it is propagating in concentric circles so there is my first wave front okay and here is my second wave front and I want to know what will be my third wave front what will it look like well I suppose you can say well it's simply a, a circle concentric circle a little bit further with the same um, wave length okay and remember 
the distance between the wave fronts, that is the wavelength, okay, so that distance and that distance ought to be the same, okay, so, in, but if, if I just were to use or apply Hagen's principle, I would get the following, that each point on this wave front becomes the source of smaller wavelets, so there's a point, now I draw a wavelet, which is a circular wave, okay, around that one with the same, uh, with a radius that is equal to the wavelength, okay, there, that's for the one particle. Now if I look at the particle right next to him, that particle, I do the same, okay, measure and what do I get? I get a cir circle like that. Okay, now I'm, I'm not doing a good job at drawing a nice circle. Okay, but I think you're getting the point. Let's do one more. Okay, let's do one more right next to him. Okay, and that one, if I'm going to draw a circle with the same radius, okay. And, um, and I if I continue to do this, I am going to get circles like that all around for each particle I do it now if I were to draw a line tangent to these little concentric circles oh sorry they're not concentric uh, tangent to these circles these smaller wavelets I have to kind of connect their fronts okay and if I continue to do this for all of them I will in fact get my third wave front which I'm afraid is not so pretty okay but again <laughs> despite my lack of artistic skills I'm sure you are getting exactly what I'm saying um, if not then I'm sorry but that's what Hagen's principle is saying and um, in the next video we'll use it to discuss the diffraction of uh, waves. In other words, when waves pass through a slit or when there's an object in a wave's path. So here waves are coming and there's, here you can see, oh, let me just draw a bit more straight. Okay, there, there's two wave fronts and they're now approaching this barrier. There's an obstruction in the way and as they pass through here, they seem to be doing this. Okay. And we're going to talk about why does it do that. That is called diffraction, and that's in the next video. See you there.